Hi, Jason Sullivan here. Just wanted to talk briefly about practicing. It's December 31st, and at this time of year, a lot of people uh, take on New Year's resolutions. My New Year's resolution is to get more practice time. And one of the ways that I do that is I use practice charts. Uh, I have my students write down what they practice, I write down what I practice, and I find it's a very valuable tool. So I just wanted to show you a little bit about how I handle that. So over here on the piano, I've got a notebook. And in this notebook, I've got a bunch of pages, but these pages are part of the practice log. So on this sheet, I can write down notes for the week, various goals, things that I want to accomplish. And then over on this chart, I have all these little blocks, each one representing, for me, they're 15 minutes. You can do 20, something like that. I don't recommend more than 15 to 20 minutes at a time, and I could talk about that. But so if I start here, I'd write down what I practice, do it for 15, 20 minutes, move on to the next block, the next block, the next block. And so these are called units of practice. So as I flip back through my book, you can see, and actually this is today. So I am fixing to get some practicing in. But this is what I've done uh, earlier in the week. And, and what I do is I just write down what I work on. I have a, a little shorthand that I use. So for example, I don't know if you can read it, but in this block, I worked on some intervals. I did major seconds. I do nine of them, 145 beats a minute. And I did, that was the range that I worked on. And then this gives me an opportunity to keep track of what I do on a daily basis. So when I get to the next day, I can see what I've already done and I can build on that or I can change it as needed. And if I need to write down some notes for future consideration, I write them over here. And then when I turn to, well, actually what I should say is that when, for example, in this week, as I was doing this practice, what I would do is I would flip to this page and I would write down these notes so that when I got to this week, I would then have this information to check in with. And then that would help change and modify what I was going to be doing over here. So this year, I've been keeping accurate practice logs. And it doesn't take long. It looks tedious, but it's not. You just write down a little bit of what you're going to do. Boom, 15 minutes. And as we go through. We can see I've tried to practice every day. That's been a goal of mine. I was not successful. I was very sick one week. And you can see I got almost nothing done that week. Started there. And then going through. So you get the idea. Just writing down what I work on. So I've got a notebook full of these pages. So a couple of things that I've noticed with keeping track of practicing and writing down what you actually practice. Pop that down. For me, when I have accurate information about what I just worked on, I am more well-informed when it comes time to practice again. I also find that if I get more days in a row and I, I take less days off, that each day actually becomes more fruitful and, and kind of more productive. So when I get to that seventh day in a row, that eighth day in a row, that ninth day in a row, I'm actually making discoveries that it kind of took me eight or nine days to really figure out what I wanted to do, and so I'm, I'm getting to be more productive that way. When I was in school, there were a lot of times where I was so busy with coursework that I didn't get the practice time that I wanted to get. And there were some days where it just didn't happen at all. Uh, it was common for me to practice six days a week. Uh, some weeks it would be even less than that. And I know that there are some music majors, particularly, uh, let's say, some undergrad music majors, who might have this notion that weekends or holidays are, are fine to just not do, uh, considering it like another college degree where uh, if you don't have any homework, then you don't have to do any homework over the course of a weekend. And that can really be uh, kind of problematic for a practicing musician. And I just, I came up with just a little bit of kind of a mathematic equation to show you why. So this is not any kind of perfect science, but imagine if you will, here I wrote down some stuff. Imagine if you will, the first day you practice, let's say you get, I don't know, a 1.0 level of productivity, but then you practice two days in a row and that next day you get a 1.1 and then the third day, let's say you get a 1.2. Now these numbers are highly hypothetical, but it's just to show some kind of mathematical pattern to where practicing multiple days in a row can really have an effect on what you do. Now let's say you take one day off. Well, that means whatever level of productivity you had before, now it's down 0.1 when you come back. Let's say you take two days off, it goes down to 0.2. Three days off, it goes minus 0.3. So if we take that logic and we put it into, let's say, a three-week practice session, 
Let's look at the column here on the left. So we've got somebody who practices 1.0, 1.1, 1.2, so they take a day off and then it kind of goes back to 1.1, a little more productivity, a couple days off, and the numbers keep kind of dropping back down and then the productivity picks back up as more days get in a row. Those numbers total 14.7. But if you come over here to this hardcore practicer who just practiced pretty much every day, well, one day off there, and then they got back into the swing of things. Look at the difference in what the math totals out. Now, it doesn't seem like much, but I did this. So let's now say somebody were to practice and they were going to take off weekends and holidays. That mathematical equation would total 285.8. Somebody who's hardcore and just practices every day using that mathematical equation would get up to 438.9. Now that's if once you get to three days in a row, you just stay on a level of 1.2. Now the, again, these numbers are hypothetical. But you can see that there is a tremendous difference between somebody who's getting every day and just hitting it every day and going after those little nitpicky things about their practice and making new discoveries about how to be more uh, productive with their time, how to be more efficient with their time, and how to work through the problems that they have. You can see that there's a huge difference if we use that numerical equation just as a basic guideline for the, the difference that can happen in terms of one's trajectory. So as I go into this new year, one of the things that I'm gonna do is practice more days. My goal is to practice 365 days, no nights, no weekends, no holidays. I'm going to make sure that I practice every single day. Uh, some days I'm not going to practice very hard. If I have a busy performance schedule, I might need to take it, take it easy. But there's still things that I can work on and there are still things that can be done. And for me, I'm interested in seeing what happens when I do every single day within the year. So that's my New Year's resolution. If you go to www.jasonsolomon.com and then you go to Solomon Brass Community, and then you go to uh, UNA Low Brass Students, and then from there you go to a link for a weekly lessons. You'll find out all sorts of information about what I do with my students and what I encourage them to do. And it's actually what I do in the week. Uh, the exercises that I do and the way that I kind of cycle it up. But on that page, you'll find a link for practice charts. It's a free PDF download. So if you want to download these charts, put them in a notebook and just start writing down what it is that you do. There's a couple of things that you're going to be amazed by if you do this. Number one, you're going to be amazed at how much less you practice than you think you do. We all seem to think we practice way more than we do. But when you start writing it down, uh, sometimes, sometimes it surprises you. Uh, number two, by practicing in 15 to 20 minute chunks and then switching gears and going to something else, it gives you the opportunity to take things uh, that I call micro breaks, uh, stand up, stretch something, grab a drink of water, and just kind of physically change your body. Maybe go from sitting to standing in your practice session. Uh, anything to change it up so that the body isn't sitting uh, stagnant in one position for far too long. That's where physical problems can really start to build up. That's where repetitive stress and injury can really start to get us down. Uh, a couple of other things. When you write down what you have uh, per, you know, for every day, then you start seeing trends. Uh, a lot of us tend to gravitate towards the things we like to practice, and we tend to gravitate, gravitate away from the things that we do not like to practice. And that can be problematic because uh, we really should be doing the opposite. We really should be going after the things that we are the weakest at and trying to turn those into a source of strength. In fact, I would go so far as to say, if you are trying to turn one of your three biggest weaknesses into a strength, then you're practicing. If you are not trying to turn one of your three biggest weaknesses into a strength, th then you're not practicing. You're just playing. And there's nothing wrong with playing. Playing is a valuable part of what we need to do. And if you're a recreational player, you're probably playing most, if not all, of the time. But if you want to keep chipping away and getting better at the instrument and having a career playing the instrument, then you need to be practicing. You need to be practicing what we would call deliberate practice, mindful practice, quality practice, whatever you want to call it. Uh, we need to be working after turning those weaknesses into strengths. And so keeping practice charts can really shine a flashlight on what we spend our time on and how efficient and how focused we are towards that end. Uh, that's probably the biggest thing that I've personally gained from it and many of my students has gained, have gained as well. So hopefully that's helpful information. Again, jasonsolomon.com, free downloads. Go and check out a bunch of information. Happy New Year and happy practicing.